the skin, in all forms, the territory of the senses, the frontier of the body, the means of communication with the exterior and with other living beings. Throughout evolution, the skin, the cuticle, has acquired its present functions, forms, or diverse colorations. The different groups of living beings have used their skin for many different reasons, or very similar ones. It functions as a thermal insulator, as protection against potentially harmful agents, as a warning, as camouflage, as a means of communication between members of the same species, or as a sexual signal. Thanks to its variety and adaptations, life has extended throughout the planet. Its functions are extremely varied. There are shelled animals which can resist the pounding of a wave. Hair which forms defensive bushes. Compact hair which is in the shape of a dangerous horn. Beautiful armor for protection against enemies and inclement weather. Feathers big and small which color the jungle. or conserved to help survive in the coldest temperatures on Earth. Even poisonous skins, which warn others of its potential danger with appealing colors. But besides all this, the skin has served as a starting point for evolution to create very curious and useful tools for the animal kingdom wings, necklaces, and even unique glands which may be poisonous or mammary glands. Of course, it has also caused severe problems for certain animals. The silky feathers of the African ostrich, or the brilliant feathers of the Quetzal, with colors and brilliance similar to gems, has placed them in the bullseye of human beings who have wanted to show them off for themselves. Animals such as crocodiles, seals, otters, or even tigers have been skinned in many regions of the planet in order to make use of their skin as ornaments or to please the presumptions of man. But let's get to the point. Let's begin our journey through the world of fashion, the world of animal wear. Fish are one of the most sensitive animal types on the planet. Most of them possess an extremely sensitive skin throughout their body, since many of them live in turbulent and murky waters in which visibility is a problem. One of evolution's solutions to aid sight is to provide their skin with sensors which receive information from the exterior. Their skin is a true suit of sensations. The line on the side, present on many species, is a group of epidermal cells distributed linearly on both sides of the body. These specialized cells are capable of informing the animal of changes in pressure and movement of objects close by. 
Fish are capable of interpreting them and knowing if it is a fellow species member or maybe a potential predator on the prowl. In this case, the skin has become the most refined and effective sense for the continuation of life. However, aquatic mammals have developed a skin that is not necessarily sensitive, but quite the contrary, an almost perfect insulator against the cold exterior. Walruses have an insulating wetsuit made up of various layers which add up to almost four centimeters in thickness. Their wrinkled skin possesses a fine texture with soft and short hairs which are almost absent along the neck and shoulders of the male. It is precisely here where the skin is at its thickest in order to resist the impact of its rival's fangs. Underneath the hair, which is very dense, it has a subdermal layer of fat, which is seven to 10 centimeters thick. This layer exists throughout the body, and because it is such a poor conductor of heat, it isolates muscles and organs from the exterior. These Arctic animals always live in areas in which the highest temperatures are never more than three or four degrees Celsius. The walrus's finest sense of touch is in its whiskers, which have become a very sensitive tool capable of finding and distinguishing mollusks in the dark waters of the ocean, where sunlight can barely make its way. On the other end of the planet, elephant seals manifest a relatively similar body structure. They are enormous masses of flesh and fat, which find it hard to move on dry land. Long ago, the flesh and fat of these animals were the salvation of sailors who went hungry while navigating these southern latitudes. But for large males, it appears to be of great advantage, since it also protects them from the many hits they receive while females are in heat. It is then when they show off their strength and rival each other for the mastery of the female harems. If it weren't for the many layers which cover the body, many of those hits might be lethal. There are other aquatic mammals, however, which do not have an impregnable layer of skin. Otters spend three to five hours a day underwater. Contrary to seals, they do not have a subdermal layer of insulation. Their hair, dense and lustrous, is the secret to how these animals can stand such cold and varying temperatures of the many rivers they inhabit. In fact, 
Their hair is so warm and shiny that they were hunted for centuries for the manufacture of luxury coats. Their annihilation was so widespread that in countries such as Japan, they have become extinct. The otter's hair is extremely dense, compact, and lustrous. When dry, it has a rather soft texture. But when wet, it forms small strands, which seem to become quite entangled, as if they were scales. This characteristic, along with its appealing shine, are due to the oils which make them almost watertight and which comes from sebaceous glands. This secreted oil forms an outer barrier which creates a layer of air on the otter's skin, thus completely isolating it and keeping it dry at all times. In the case of the otter, keeping the skin healthy is basic to its survival. The same thing happens with the small Iberian Pyrenean Desmond. This Iberian mole, which is no larger than the length of a hand, follows the same strategy as the otter, although it belongs to a different branch of the food chain, the insectivores. The Pyrenean Desmond spends a lot more time in the water, searching for larvae and aquatic insects. Therefore, it must spend a great deal of energy to groom its own skin and thick hair, clean it, and keep it well oiled in order to provide an appropriate insulation. The Pyrenean Desman is known in many regions as the musk dispenser. Musk is precisely a greasy and thick substance segregated by the cutaneous glands of some mammals. This image allows us to observe that part of the oil which it secretes fills its thick hair and forms a shiny film in the waters of the brook. Because of its unctuousness and aromas, some musks function as basic compounds in the manufacture of certain well-known perfumes. In the case of the Pyrenean Desman, it seems that its pelts were kept in closets, since its smell pleasantly perfumed clothes and deterred moths from entering. Oil as an additive to adequately conserve hairy coverings of animals is not exclusive to mammals. Aquatic birds make good use of the uropygial gland. It is the only external gland which birds have and it is in charge of repairing the oleic substance which facilitates insulation and a proper feathering process. Most aquatic birds have a particularly developed version of this gland. This special gland is situated on the back of the animal, near the tailbone. One can frequently notice how ducks spread their beaks with this dense secretion, and then in turn spread it on the feathers of all of its body. Plus, it is an extra source of vitamin D. A noticeable exception to this rule can be found in the cormorant, which has developed a very different strategy. The cormorant's feathers lack this additive and therefore get wet very easily. The wet feathers allow them to dive with great ease and therefore a lot faster than their rivals, which translates into a greater success rate per immersion. Its success is so high that it needs no more than a couple of fishing sessions a day in order to satisfy its energetic requirements. It's true that cormorants do not spend much time or energy greasing their feathers. They must, however, spend a great deal of time with their wings wide open in order to let the sun dry them completely before they can take flight.
Without leaving the water, but in a very different environment, we will discover the armored suit of the crocodile. It is a radically different strategy, but it is quite useful as an insulator, as long as the environment they inhabit is warm. Reptiles do not easily produce and distribute body heat, and their skin is not designed to conserve it, although it is quite effective at insulating the body without losing water. They were the first vertebrates to conquer dry land with unprecedented success. This is partly why crocodiles have barely evolved in almost 90 million years. The skin of the crocodile provides a magnificent physical defense against environmental aggressions. It's a horny shell, a true armor, made of hard scales and shields of bone, which defended them for many millennia until the advent of firearms. Because of unchecked hunting customs, it was exterminated from many of its original habitats. In fact, the locus of points in which it was distributed was drastically reduced from the American continent to Africa, Asia, and Australia. Its value resides in the beauty of its skin, primitive and highly appealing, it's now a symbol of luxury. In general, reptiles have developed a special covering which envelops the whole body and is at the same time very light, offering heat resistance against desiccation and capable of resisting mechanical work. The King Chlamydosauruses are proof of these advantages. They possess the most widespread horny structures, such as scales and epidermal shields. This elastic covering allows them to move very quickly in order to escape from predators or to hunt. Besides this, they possess a peculiar neck which they use to intimidate rivals although it may not always prove to be effective, and at times they have to share their lunch. Far from Australia, where we've met marine crocodiles and chlamydosauruses, we find one of the most interesting cutaneous structures in reptiles. It's the rattlesnake's noisy rattle. These venomous serpents inhabit the forests and deserts of North and Central America. Year after year, they add rings to their rattle, which they shake when they perceive they're in danger. The rattle is made of commonly articulated cones, which emit a very well-known sound when they're shaken. Biologists have debated the importance and use of such an artifact, and today we can assert with certainty only that they use the rattle as a warning before defending themselves. Snakes have an interesting scaly covering throughout their whole body. The scales are designed to resist the mechanical work necessary to produce movement, which is essential to them since they constantly slither on their abdominal area. By the same token, we discover another important function of the skin in jungle creatures, but this time related to design and color. Certain animals use it as a warning sign but contrary to the rattlesnake, without all the fuss and noise. The coral snake, with its appealing colors, sends a warning with its colors that it is a very dangerous animal and that it's best not to bother it. These warning colors, these attractive designs which are so appealing, are quite frequent in nature. The combination of black and yellow in wasps accomplishes the same effect. Its painful sting will forever haunt the memory of any animal that attacks it. And this painful memory will forever be black and yellow.
It is exactly the same pair of colors as the salamander, with the exception that the salamander's skin houses cutaneous glands which secrete a toxic venom capable of irritating the mucous membranes of any animals that try to eat it. Again, the two contrasting colors serve as a warning. Returning to the jungle, small blue jean frogs are among many amphibians which share the same strategy. But they have taken it to the extreme. Their bodies become brilliant with color, and notwithstanding their tiny size, they secrete one of the most powerful venoms on the whole planet. Their alkaloid substances which attack the nervous system of the heart instantly. The poison-producing glands in amphibians are an effective solution to defend animals with very few resources. They don't have fangs, they can't fight, they can't even flee at great speeds. Tribes in the Amazon use toxic secretions from these frogs to dip the arrows they use to hunt with. These specialized glands come from the mucus which is spread throughout the whole body. But the venomous glands tend to group in the shape of warts, while the smaller mucus glands, essential to survival, are distributed throughout the whole surface. In the common toad, they're around 9 per square millimeter. Forty in the common frog, and 130 in the small San Antonio frog. These small glands humidify the skin and allow the animal to breathe through it. Other amphibians, such as spool toads, are completely harmless since their body produces no toxic substance. Their skin is delicate, sensitive, and moist. For this toad, its routine usually begins at night, as it must hide from the lethal rays of the sun and from potential predators. Its skin, however, has provided it with a tool which helps him hide. Its feet are tough and shaped in such a way that allow it to dig fairly quickly in the semi-wet and sandy habitat it lives in. With these improvised shovels, he can disappear from predator's sight until conditions are more favorable. But the shape, color, and chromatic design of the skin serve a multitude of purposes among the many members of the animal kingdom. One of its most admired goals is love. Many birds use the color and design of their feathers to court their mates. The males of the species wear their best suits and provide an amazing visual array of colors to conquer the females. One of the most appealing hotshots is the peacock, originally from Asia, but today a citizen of the world, 
precisely due to the beauty of its feathers, which have made him a living ornament in many a garden. The marvelous chromatic array it displays are produced in two very different ways. The appealing iridescent and metallic hues of many birds depend on the physical structure of its feathers, which only reflect certain wavelengths. This translates into the metallic blues and greens of the body, or the feathery eyes of the peacock. Its mission is to attract females. It seems that they are most attracted to the individual that displays the most eyes. These are precisely the oldest of the group, the ones that have proven to be most adapted to living in diverse circumstances. In the case of the European wild turkey, which dances a very similar choreography, the plumage is quite dark. Its mating suit is colored by pigments with barely any iridescent hues at all. This is the most common form of coloration for birds, for whom color is a direct result of pigments such as melanin, the most common of all, which is responsible mainly for the black and brown colors of its feathers. Faced with such an amazing visual display, the female tends to be surprisingly discreet. This same contrast between males and females can be seen in the small stone chat, which is similar to the wild turkeys. The male is equipped with contrasting tones, blacks, oranges, and whites. The female, however, is brown, and its main mission is to keep the eggs warm and nurture the chicks. For this, they too need special attire, vulgar and common, which does not attract attention to them. Her work requires total discretion. The success of her mission depends on her ability to not attract any attention from predators. But there are also species in which both the female and the male are dressed to go incognito in order to ensure the success of their mission. The Suiriri goose of Australia is a marvelous example of this. This animal lives in the outer fringes of humid areas, specifically in forests of eucalyptus trees, where it eats from the plants which live among the leaves. Its feathers have adopted the color of its surroundings and have even imitated the way in which the leaves fall from the eucalyptus tree, so that when they rest, they appear to be dry leaves. In many cases, the more appealing feathers are only temporary and are exhibited only during the mating season. Afterwards, it's better for these animals to not call attention to themselves, and they usually change to more discreet wear. But there are animals that are able to change their color at their own whim. Let's travel to Africa for an encounter with chameleons. These reptiles possess the marvelous ability to change the color of their skin whenever they wish to. They change the pattern and color of their clothing 
depending on the surroundings and on their mood. Males and females wear different colors depending on how sexually excited they are, manifesting whether or not they are in heat, whether the females are pregnant, or if the time has come to fight for one's territory. Then the males wear their war colors and begin to duel. Hormones order changes in color to the pigment cells, and their aggressiveness translates into contrasting colors, which show their rival how irritated they are. The pushing, shoving, and biting which ensues becomes terribly violent in a matter of minutes, which is quite fast for the pace at which these animals live. Finally, one of them, intimidated and hurt, will quickly run away quickly for a chameleon. The seasons of the year and the exterior temperature induce changes in their aspect, and color plays an important role in its thermoregulation. Anyway, the basic colors of its body almost always help it to blend into its environment. Far from African territory, in the midst of the Amazon jungle, we discover the sloth. Although they are almost completely different from the chameleons, they share certain characteristics. They are extremely slow, and like them, hands and feet are designed to grip branches as if they were pliers. This animal may be the most adept of mammals at the fine art of camouflage. Its dense and long mane falls on its back with a very different design from that of all other mammals. Their hair has special scales which provides a haven for two types of blue-green algae. These algae provide the sloth with a greenish tone which enables it to go unnoticed while it lazily grabs onto a branch and slowly eats snails. This dense mass of hair is also home to beetles, moths, and different ticks. It is in itself one of the most curious and exclusive ecosystems in the jungle. These doe are the offspring of the European deer. When they're born, their best defense is their ability to hide and be quiet. Their bodies are void of any odor and are colored in such a way as to blend into the surroundings. Their cinnamon-colored skin is full of white spots, 
which break the uniformity of the fur. As they grow, they lose this protection, but become much faster and better at reacting quickly. Potential prey, as well as hunters, use the tactic of the spotted or speckled skin. It's a game of life or death, in which the player with the best camouflage has the biggest prize to win. The most magnificent hunter of the Indian forests is the tiger. And its preferred prey is the chital. A medium-sized deer with a fur that displays mimetic designs. This herbivore is quite common to the jungles and forests of India. The large white spots that speckle its body break the contours of its silhouette against the chiaroscuros of wooded regions, where the light shines between the leaves to yield shimmering spots all around. Chital populations can become very large if not controlled adequately. The tiger is a natural limiter of these populations because of the frequent presence of the dotted deer in the tiger's regular diet. The tiger is a solitary predator that uses the design of its skin to hide and stealthily approach its potential prey, sheltered by the shadows of the forests or the cane thickets. Its striped skin plays along with the chromatic pattern of the jungle in such a way that the tiger can move unnoticed as it prepares an ambush through the dense vegetation. Indeed, the tiger possesses an admirable suit designed to hunt. With patience, stealth, and its perfect outfit, the tiger is able to place itself at the right distance to perform a successful attack. However, in the kingdom of the tiger, there is an animal, besides the elephant, that is not on its menu. It's the rhinoceros of the Indian jungles. Rhinoceros means horn nose. And in its case, we find another interesting use of the skin for a clearly defensive task. It is the horn of the rhinoceros itself. It consists of an extremely hard aggregate of fibers that are comparable to hair. Those fibers are compressed and grow on top of the snout, yielding as a result a sharp and hard horn that daunts any enemy. On top of having this powerful weapon, the rhinoceros is also corpulent, and it has a flexible and cuirassed skin, similar to an armor, which is formed of jointed layers that cover its large body. We can easily understand why the tigers don't waste time in attacking them. Yet, if we want a completely authentic cuirass or body armor, we have to turn our sights on the armadillos found on the plains of Venezuela and in large parts of the American continent. The armadillos have taken the technique of the armor to the limit of perfection within the scope of mammals. Hard bony layers emerge from its epidermis, covered with a stratum of calloused skin. The head, the flanks, and the tail 
are covered with this armor threaded by the animal's elastic skin. Its cuirass is highly effective in protecting it against the thorny plants on the paths it usually travels. But it also protects it from some of its numerous attackers. The armadillo's fast trot through the vegetation of the plains allows it to effectively move away from perils and to fearlessly penetrate the most dense and dangled places in search of food. Its cuirassed outfit is a light armor that is quite versatile for such activities. Some of the most distant relatives of the small armadillos reached enormous sizes. Their cuirass was so hard and so large that the ancient Americans used them as shelters. But skin is capable of becoming more manageable and peculiar armor. The hair of hedgehogs or porcupines has been converted into a high-tech suit. Their thick hair is an inimitable spiny armor. However, even though their suits may have a similar appearance, they belong to very different groups. Porcupines inhabit regions in America and are authentic rodents related to guinea pigs. Hedgehogs, on the other hand, are insectivores and inhabit regions of the Old World. An adult common European hedgehog has about 5,000 spines in all its body, which become erect thanks to a special musculature, separated from the rest through a layer of adipose tissue. This special muscle, exclusive to hedgehogs, works like a sphincter that encloses the animal in a spiny sac with quills that always point outwards. To alleviate the weight of the hedgehog's weaponry, the spines are not solid. Instead, they have various air chambers inside, separated by layers that give to them a great deal of firmness. To be born with such a skin could be very painful for mama hedgehog. However, the offspring, besides being blind, are born basically naked and have only a few rows of small spines, white and soft, that begin to harden up a few days after their birth. Despite their strength, the bristles of the wild boar have nothing to do with the spines of the hedgehog. The wild boar has dense and thick hair that allows it to penetrate the densest vegetation without suffering wounds or scratches. In addition, the skin on its flanks has hardened considerably to form a formidable cuirass that protects it against the attempts of rivals and predators. Nevertheless, such thick hair requires continuous maintenance. In larger or smaller amounts, all mammals have to take care of their skin to remain healthy and lustrous. The wild boar solves this hygienic necessity with its usual mud baths that serve to take off its parasites as well as to freshen up during the stifling months. We can find this habitat also in the middle of Africa. The thick and wrinkled skin of elephants needs special care. Their enormous bodies wear the largest sizes, with simple designs that proudly illustrate the slogan that a famous fashion expert once said, wrinkles are beautiful. The elephant's skin is very thick, but at the same time very delicate, and needs to be protected against the sun and parasites. The enormous volume of its body complicates the maintenance of the dermis, which is usually attacked by unpleasant guests. 
That's why elephants spend long hours giving themselves mud baths, so that the mud remains on their skin to protect them against the sun and the insects. When it isn't possible to bathe with water or mud, they use their trunks as shower heads to spread sand on their whole body so that the dust aids them in the elimination of the annoying parasites. This activity is very typical for African pachyderms. Besides needing abundant water to take care of their skin, elephants need water to survive. In a single day, they need to drink between 80 and 160 liters of water. They can drink such an amount of liquid in less than five minutes. After having freshened their throats, these Indian elephants will commit themselves to the care of their skin, which takes time and effort. At the same time, these moments become the most wonderful ones on their journey, when the entire pack dives and plays joyfully in the rivers or wetlands close to the jungle. But the skin and its derivatives also have an important social role. Besides serving suitors to seduce their lovers, certain shapes and designs serve to make the herds cohesive, to indicate who's the boss of the herd and their hierarchy or to emit visual signals that warn their kind about the existence of some danger. Perhaps no animal has been able to find a suit for every place and occasion like human beings. The British say that there's never bad weather, but that you're simply not wearing the appropriate dress. Humanity has created suits and dresses to seduce the world, to control it, to enjoy it. or to exploit it in the most diverse manners. Despite often appearing amazing and unbelievable, in many cases, those suits and dresses are no more than an imitation of the designs that are exhibited on the wonderful catwalk of nature. Thank you.